Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. This is Marco. I'm actually behind the camera today. I got Roman with me. Uh, we're at his house flip here in Northeast Ohio. Uh, Roman, if you wanna introduce yourself, people may remember you from the last video we did together, but you got a new property under contract. Uh, tell me what we're doing today. Absolutely, hey, my name is Roman. Um, I own a real estate business here in Cleveland, Ohio. We flip houses, we rent houses, we renovate houses, we do it all. So uh, what we're doing here today is um, I'm gonna show you my uh, newest flip project and we're gonna talk about the design aspect and what we're doing on the inside of the property but quickly I just want to touch on, on how I purchased this this is actually an MLS purchase which means it was on the market for everybody else to buy I happened to be the first one in put a cash offer in on the spot and bam I got it like that so any one of you guys could have done it I just happened to jump on the opportunity so come on follow me Marco we're gonna show uh, I'll show you guys some uh, work that we already started and uh, the design aspect of the property that we're going to be doing. So follow me. All right, as you guys can tell, uh, I got some guys working in here. Um, wide open space. Uh, we're going to repaint everything. Um, we're going to uh, do a design piece right here on the staircase. So we're going to do those uh, cable ropes. If you guys know what I'm talking about, the cable ropes, uh, they're very popular nowadays in new construction and modern design. Um, so this is very cool open space and we're thinking about incorporating an accent wall somewhere we don't know yet but um, not much to see here um, come on into um, the dining room and I'll show you what we're doing there um, as far as this dining room we're gonna put an accent wall on that back wall uh, almost like a shiplap sort of uh, thing I know you guys seen that um, on HGTV so where a lot of this stuff is replicating and uh, copying from what other designers what other rehabbers do so come on over here and I'll show you the kitchen that's what everyone wants to see all right a couple th things in the kitchen you guys see we demoed it but I just want to touch on exactly what we're doing so all the cabinets are torn out uh, all new uh, white shaker cabinets are coming in all right this wall this was a half wall we tore the wall out. It's not a structural support wall, so we're just, uh, we're not even putting the beam in here. We're just drywalling everything, okay? Now, if you come around this side, this is the most important right here. Um, this was a wall. Uh, one thing that I do in all my designs and all my flips, I try to open up the space so it's, uh, so it's, you know, it's a wider open um, living space because that's, that's what buyers want. So we tore the wall down right now. The whole second floor is pretty much supported on this uh, <laughs> two by four right here. But anyway, we're putting the support beam up here. Um, if you guys can see, there is uh, air duct, uh, air vents running through. So we had to eliminate those. You see all the electrical wires. We had to re rewire all that. So when you tear, tear open walls, you're gonna encounter problems. And that's, um, if you're not an experienced rehabber, um, you're, you're not gonna know what to do with that. So we've done it before tore it out, rewired everything, re-ran everything, and uh, we actually put this uh, um, air duct work into this wall right here, and it's already all sealed up and closed up, so you can't tell. Uh, Got it, so real quick, yeah. uh, typically since this is, uh, the way I'm gonna film this, you guys, is probably in uh, a few different uh, parts. Um, if you wanna run through maybe like the numbers or how you evaluate these deals, um, and sorry guys, I'm like blinding Roman with this light. I have to keep it lit in here because we're obviously in a, you know, uh, unlit house right now. Um, what numbers do you look at when you look at these deals? So I follow the 70% rule. Uh, basically, I purchased the house for 70% uh, of the after repair value minus the repair cost. That's pretty typical for uh, all rehabbers. And if I follow that formula, I have um, multiple exit strategies. So I can refinance the property, keep it as a long-term rental, or I can straight flip. Um, the other thing I look at is rehab expenses. They're pretty much set by square footage. I know what my paint's gonna cost. I know what my floor's gonna cost, all based on the square footage of the house. And then a couple of things like removing walls, a couple of extra things we add on. And then the biggest thing I look at is the big ticket items. Okay, the big ticket items are basements, uh, foundational problems, driveways, um, uh, roofs. Uh, we check the attic for mold. Uh, so things like that, things are, that are going to add to your um, rehab expense. So that's how I evaluate them. Nice. Let, let me show you guys upstairs. The, not, not a lot to see there, but if you follow me, I'll show you what we're doing up there. Make 
excuse the mess. It's expected. So how long have you guys had this property? Uh, less than a week. Wow. <laughs> we, we, we work fast, man. Yeah. So um, here's what I was telling you guys. I just, want, I just want you guys to see this. When you remove a wall and you have to rewire the electri electrical work, this is where the can lights are going to go in. You, you, see, uh, you see where we cut out the hole for the that's, can lights? That's the kitchen below us? Yep, the kitchen's right below us. This is the duct work that we uh, ran. Uh, remember, we removed it from that one wall and we moved it to another wall. So this is how it's done. We open up the second floor, um, second story floor. We run them through the floors and disperse it throughout all, all the rooms. So make sure they're all even. Um, and then the only thing I want to show you guys is the masters. So come on, follow me. So it's kind of a mess, if you could tell. Um, leaking skylight. But it's not a problem. We're just going to fix the skylight, redo all the drywall, fix everything up. It's going to look nice. Uh, I want to show you, um, talk about the design here. So we're going to have a floating uh, countertop, all right? Not a vanity. It's going to be a floating countertop, shiplap on the walls, all right? All black um, uh, faucets and all black hardware. And we're going to have round mirrors. Uh, when it's all said and done, guys, it's going to look fantastic. It's going to look amazing, nice. um, nice. like HGTV. And then out of this uh, master, you have your um, your shower and then your bathroom. We're going to put a, what's it called, uh, a barn door into here. So Toilet. Toilet. Shower. Shower, yeah. Got it. Not much to see there, but the barn door is going to be right here. A rail is going to go up top. Barn door is going to slide, you know, open and close the this uh, section of the bathroom. Very and nice. what's nice about this is it's open into the master bedroom. So, and as you can tell, everything's prepped for paint. We're ready to go. So, okay. So, thank you for the tour. This is the first part of the video. Um, what I want to do is, what is your estimate of what your ARV is, your after repair value? I don't want to put you on the spot because yeah. we're going to shoot this video after it gets sold as well. But, um, what are you shooting for on this well, one? Well, I underwrite them really conservative. So, uh, 220. Um, I'm, I say 220, but usually uh, we sell uh, for over what I estimated at. And usually in this market right now, we get multiple offers. We get above asking price offers. So I wouldn't be surprised if this goes for 230, 240, 250, because this is Strongsville. It's a class A neighborhood. So nice, very nice. All right, thank you for your time, Roman. I'm going to cut the video here. We'll get to the next part once the rehab is done. And then after that, we'll do post sale. So thank you so much for your time today, Sounds buddy. Sounds good, thanks. Hey everybody, week five. So we're four weeks after the first part of this recording. Uh, Roman, take us through the house. Let's see what all we right, did. Let's do it. Follow me. First of all, landscaping, check it out. Painting the garage door. As you walk in here, look at this. Beautiful, painted everything. Look at the light, get the light fixtures and uh, we'll look at the railing a little bit. But I want you to check this kitchen out first. Remember, there's a wall here, opened up a wall. All new cabinets, all new uh, granite. Uh, one thing I'm very proud of, this is the first time we put a black granite sink in the flip. Very so, nice. kind of cool. All right, follow me into the dining room. Again, new light fixtures, uh, paneling that we always do. This is one of our signature design uh, pieces. And then follow me through here as I show you this, um, the railing. Cool. I think it adds a very luxury piece, um, like a design piece. Check out the bathroom. Uh, we always go with the dynamic colors, very so nice. uh, it pops out. And uh, all our hardware is always black. So look at the faucet and, and the light itself. We always go with the black hardware. It sticks out. And then follow me in here. And this is the thing that I'm the most proud of, is the master. Very nice. So... And same thing here, you know, we go with the black hardware, we go with the, uh, everything else is kind of white, uh, spray paint everything white, but everything else is black, so. Very nice. um, and then uh, we obviously incorporated barn door. These are very popular nowadays. And as you walk in, we got the stand up shower and everything that goes along with that. Okay, so time to rehab this. Uh, four weeks about since we were last here. Yep. Okay. Um, 
I know we asked some questions in the first video. It's been about a month, so I, I may be repeating myself. Um, in terms of acquisition, you found it on the MLS. Yes, I did. Um, in terms of underwriting, you know, are you conservative in your underwriting? How did how did you do all that? Yeah, absolutely, super conservative. You know, we didn't know that the, the, the what was coming. You know, but we still wrote it conservative, and therefore everything worked out. Got it. So that's actually a very good point. So we actually originally filmed this before everything happened with, you know, the pandemic yes. and quarantine and all that stuff. Um, however, you're still um, putting the house up for a, a price that you underwrote it for. Um, you're not lowering that price, correct? No, I'm not lowering the price, but we, um, like, being conservative, uh, even if we did lower the price, we would still you're make still some money. You're right. still in the black. Got it. Okay, cool. So next video, we're going to come back here. Uh, you just listed the property. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Just went live. Got it. Okay. If you had to guess, how long do you think it's going to be on the market? Are you going to get a million bids? Is it going to sit? I, I know it's a scary question, but if you had to guess. Well, historically, all my flips sell within the first 24 hours. Just, I mean, because look at how beautiful this thing is. And it's a, uh, it, this is a very nice neighborhood. It's Strongsville, Ohio, uh, very desirable neighborhood, class A. Class a so, suburb, yeah. yeah, so it'll, it'll sell quick. Got it. Cool. All right. So let's, uh, I'll just do one of these. I haven't, been, I don't think I've recorded myself yet, but uh, we're going to come back here. The house is being listed. He's using his agent that he always uses. Um, if history is true, I'll probably be back here in a week to see if they get an offer. We'll talk about numbers, so stay tuned. Thank you, Roman. Thank you. Okay, everybody, this is week six, not even week six. Uh, how fast did this property go under contract? Dude, less than 24 hours, Dude. sold. <laughs> okay. So his prediction came true based on his prior experience. Um, so the, some of my viewers, they asked me on Instagram when I posed them the question of, hey, I'm meeting up with my buddy, you know, what are some questions you have for house flippers? Their number one question was, what brings the biggest ROI uh, in terms of house flips? And then we can get into the numbers of, you know what the house is going to sell for taxes things like that yeah uh, good question so um, you make your money when you buy if you ever heard that term before if you buy the property right you and you will make money off of it but as far as rehab goes I think the biggest ROI is opening up the walls so we removed the wall in the kitchen and made it a wide open space um, but other than that it's all about your design and the accent pieces yeah, there was a wall right here. So you got to do the granite. You got to do the shaker cabinets. You know, we, we always stick with the black um, hardware and stuff like that. Um, you know, if, if I show you the bathroom, you'll see that it's, um, it's more modern as far as the design. Got it. Um, but it, it's nothing like crazy, you know. It, we still stick to the basics. Yeah. Um, paneling. Um, vinyl floor, things like that. So opening it up and then uh, using creative design. Pieces. What would you say is not a good return on investment? Maybe things like if you don't have to do the roof or you don't have yeah. to do the landscaping, you yeah, know, stuff like that. Yeah. So like we didn't do the roof on this one, even though it was like 15 years old, but it's still good. So that wouldn't have brought us a good ROI. And then uh, like landscaping, we only did the front a little bit kind of to make it look nice. So uh, it, stuff, uh, I guess mechanical stuff that you don't need to do that still works, then you're good. Perfect, okay, so let's get right into the meat and the whole point of the video. Um, what'd you list it for, what'd you sell it for, and let's talk a little bit about like, you know, financing and also maybe some taxes that you have to pay on these capital gains. Yeah. So listed for 239, uh, we, we, we were competitive with the price. Uh, bam, first day, multiple offers. Uh, it sold, uh, got bid up to 242. We accepted the highest and best offer at 242, and we're closing on it very fast. So, bam. Perfect. So, not too many contingencies or anything like that? No, or? no contingencies at all. Inspection went smooth. The, the, the buyers are very easy to work with. So. Got it. Perfect. Okay. So, if you don't mind sharing these numbers, you know, what are we looking at in terms of short term capital gain? You bought it for X, you're selling it for the number that you just said. Yeah. Um, you know, what, do you, what are we working with? So, I, I actually didn't calculate this, is, but, but your viewers can. So, I, uh, uh, I bought it for 135 on MLS. Um, I put thirty-two thousand into it, and I'm selling it for two forty-two. Okay, now you minus the real estate commission cost, and then a couple closing costs here and there, which I project to be around fifteen to twenty grand. 
Um, that's the profit. So Got it. okay. it's a substantial profit for uh, a flip that took me six weeks. Got it. Perfect. So in about a month and a half, you made X, you know, X of thousands of dollars. Now for the viewers, that is considered a short term capital gain. You're doing that in less than a year. Mm -hmm. So in terms of like offsetting some of those taxes or some advice that you'd have just from an accounting standpoint, how do you offset those taxes or do you just eat the taxes? I mean, is this part of the game or what? It, it is part of the game, but if you're a real estate investor, you, you have to have some rental properties on the side. If you have rental properties, they depreciate and uh, they give you the write-offs that you need to knock those capital gains down. Now also, uh, my flipping company that flips houses, it's, it's an S corporation, it's not an LLC. And the S corporation, it's taxed differently, therefore you're saving more on taxes. And then also with an S corporation, there's a lot of business expenses that I write off. Um, so all in all, um, sometimes I don't pay taxes, even though I flip homes. Got it, because the, that sink is a write-off, this granite is a write-off, you know, all the remodeling, all the materials, the labor, all those are write-offs. Yeah, and even like, you, you know, your, your phone, you know, that you use for business, your car that you drive to check on your projects. So with owning an S corporation, there's a lot of write-offs. Got it. Perfect. Okay. So this was, thank you so much for the three part series. Uh, I know we met up three times to make this video, but just any ending words for any aspiring home flippers or anything you want to end the video with? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll say this. Um, if you just sit there and you, and you always think about, Oh, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And you read books and you listen to podcasts, but you don't take action. You're never going to get started. The, you, you just got to go into it. Read some books, educate yourself, listen to some podcasts, and take action. And once you, once you get that first deal done, it's a snowball effect. You'll start snowballing, you start buying rentals, you start developing business relationship with contractors, real estate agents, title companies, uh, you name it. And then deals will start coming in, and it's a snowball effect. And next thing you know, you're living the life that you want to live. That's right, uh, because they know you're a player, and they're gonna, they know you have the ability to close and perform. They're, they're going to start bringing you deals at That's that point. Right. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Roman. I really appreciate your time. How can people find you? Any social media or anything? Oh, yeah, that's right. So you can find me on Instagram at romanempire.cle. And then uh, check out my website, rsprohomes.com. And I'm also on Facebook. Uh, the hashtag is at rsprohomes. Perfect. Thank you so much, Roman. All righty.